Good morning. How are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're going to run through the complete runout section of the postdoc workbook, go through an entire page together, and show you exactly how to set these problems up and get the correct answers quickly. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so let's do page number 149. And starting with question one at the top, we have pocket sixes. The board is jack eight six with three spades. And the question is, how often will the runout pair the board in this situation? So when we're doing complete runout analysis, always start and ask yourself, is this an and statement or an or statement? So in the event of question number one, it's an or statement, right? We need the turn to pair or the river to pair. Compare that to say number two, which is how often will we catch a runner runner flush by the river? We need a heart on the turn and a heart on the river. So this is an and statement for number two. Number one is going to be an or statement, turn pairs or the river pairs in order to satisfy the condition. And just if we want to like make it a little bit more visual, make our lives a little easier, especially if you're a very visual learner like I am, sometimes it helps just to throw it into Flopzilla so you can count your outs a little bit more easily. So one of the things I created for this is a simple little tool. Notice that there are two different tools. There's the and statement or the or statement. And in this situation, again, we already talked about this is going to be an or statement. So how many cards can pair the turn card in this situation? Well, if we just pull up Flopzilla again, we put in our dead cards, put in the board. You don't have to do it this way. I just like to do it for making things a little bit visual at first glance, especially if you haven't really done this kind of stuff before. It can help count outs a little more easily. So what can happen here is we can pair the board in the turn, which means there are, you know, three remaining jacks left in the deck that could possibly pair that turn, three remaining eights left in the deck that could pair that turn, and one remaining six, since we have two sixes in our hand. So three plus three plus one equals seven, and we can plug that right into the first box right there. So either that happens, and that's going to happen 15% of the time, or the turn doesn't pair the board, and it could possibly pair the river. So let's just say that the turn is a king of clubs. So at this point, if we're thinking about, okay, well, we missed the turn, how many board, how many cards can pair the river card? Well, there are three remaining kings now, three remaining jacks, three remaining eights, and still one remaining six, and now all of a sudden we're up to 10 outs in this spot. So there are 10 possible improvement cards. And and we notice that when it factors all through, how often is this going to happen and satisfy the condition? 33% of the time is how often that is going to happen here. And if we want, we can open up the answer key just to double check that we're on the right track. So page 149, question one, gonna happen 33% of the time. Excellent, got all that correct. And if you're looking for a shortcut when it comes to these or statements, the simple thing to do is add up your outs for each street. So there are seven outs going into the turn card. If that whiffs, then there are 10 going into the river. So 10 plus seven in this situation is 17. Multiply that number by two and slap a percentage sign at the end of it. So 17 times it by two, 34. Slap a percentage at the end of that, 34%. And that's pretty darn close to the 33% actual answer. So that's how you can kind of like eyeball this stuff in real time in case you're trying to estimate these things as opposed to do the hardcore meticulous math using either the spreadsheet or just doing it by hand. All right, question number two. We have king, queen of hearts on an ace of hearts, nine of diamonds, seven of diamonds board. Question is, how often will you catch your runner runner flush by the river in this spot? So like we already talked about a moment ago, this is an and statement. We need to catch a heart on the turn and another heart on the river. So we can use the and statement for this one. And we can plug it into Flopzilla. And just for the record, when I'm actually doing the workbook, I'm not going to plug this stuff into Flopzilla. I'm just using it here to make the video a little bit more visual and hopefully a little easier to follow. But essentially, how many outs do we have on the turn that are going to be hearts? Well, 13 total hearts on the deck. We see three of them right this moment. 13 minus three equals 10. And we can just count out all the hearts right here and see, okay, yes, there are 10 of them. And using the simple tool I created again, we're using the and statement one. There are 10 improvement cards on the turn. And then if we improve to a heart on the turn, let's just say it's the five of hearts, then how many hearts are remaining on the river? Well, we have 13 hearts in the deck. We see four of them, two on the board, two in our hand. So there are nine at that stage in the game. Perfect, and we see how often it does happen 
is 4% in this situation. So 4% goes right here. We can double check the answer key just to make sure. Page 149, number two, 4% of the time. Perfect, so we know we did this one correctly as well. And just like the or statements, which has its own shortcut, so do these and statements as well. And it's a little bit more cumbersome, but bear with me. I'll show you real quick with this example. So essentially take your outs going into the next card, multiply it by two, add a percentage sign to it, then do the same thing for the river card, then multiply those two percentages together. So the way that that would actually work in this spot is going into the turn, there are 10 hearts left in the deck. Multiply it by two is 20. Slap a percentage sign at the end of that, 20%. If that happens, then there are nine remaining hearts going into the river. Times it by two is 18. Slap a percentage sign at the end of that, perfect 18%. 20% times 18% gets you pretty much right there. If you just round that second one, say 20% times 20%, gets you to four and you're right where you need to be. Again, we already checked the answer key, so it was 4%, so we know we're in the right ballpark. It's a little bit more cumbersome, and to be honest, you're not doing a tremendous amount of like run out calculation at the tables itself. A lot of this kind of off table work is to offset having to do this stuff in real time. But when you're going through some of this stuff in the workbook, you might say, okay, I'm gonna try to eyeball this one, see if I can figure it out quickly, and then do the meticulous math that can be very, very helpful, and I suggest you do it at least a couple of times. All right, let's do this final one together. So question number three, we have pocket queens, board is seven, six, deuce, rainbow. Question is how often will the run out contain zero over cards to your pocket queen? So notice it's not over cards to the board, it's over cards to your queen specifically. So if we were to plug this into Fobzilla, queen of spades, queen of clubs, seven of diamonds, six of hearts, deuce of spades, excellent. And again, this can just be helpful for quickly counting up the number of overcards to our queens, which in this case is four unseen aces, four unseen kings, giving eight total outs. And notice that we're not assuming that our opponent has ace king or ace queen, and we're trying to deduce this. We're just saying how often is it not going to be an ace or a king on the turn and river combined. So be very, very careful with that in terms of the way that we're wording these questions, because the way that you word the question is going to impact the actual answer that you get at the end of the day, of course. So we can go back and use that tool, and you can use the and statement, right, because this is an and. How often is the turn not going to be an overcard, and also the river not being an overcard to our queens? And how often is that going to happen? Well, again, there are eight total cards that break the condition, so... 47 minus 8 is going to tell us how many cards are hit cards or satisfy the condition in this situation. So 47 minus 8 is 39. When that breaks the turn, there are 46 remaining cards going into the final card. 46 minus, again, those same eight cards is going to be 38, and that tells us how often it's going to happen. So this tells us how often the runout is going to contain zero over cards to our pocket queens, and in this case, that's 69%. Pull out the answer key just to double check it. Again, 149, question number three, 69%. Perfect, so we did this one correct as well. And that is how you do this section of the post-flop workbook. Hopefully this helps, hopefully the shortcuts come in handy, or at least you can put them in your back pocket just in case you ever need or want them. And again, take your time with this, make sure to really read the question clearly, make sure to understand and don't add extra assumptions, right? Don't assume in number three that our opponent has to have ace king and we're trying to deduce how many overcards to our queens are available. It's not six, it's eight, because we're not assuming anything about our opponent's hand unless it's clearly stated in the question. So same as always, if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there and happy grinding. And if we just count out the outs real quick, one, two, and obviously we're just, <laughs> we're not going to count these.